clearly there is controversy around this. I think that everyone would agree these are difficult things to manage. I want to bring Dr. Kelly into the conversation just to get your thoughts on what, again, we're, we're using GED for short, but essentially skin shocking for maybe some of these recalcitrant cases of, of misbehavior, if you will. So, so I think the idea of a skin shock is really minimizing what actually happens. The, the shock itself is delivered through the skin. Part of the effect is on the skin itself. It creates a burning sensation, but the majority of the effect is to actually cause the muscle underneath to seize. And anybody who's had a Charlie horse, imagine that times 100. It, it's, it's really very painful. This is, this is essentially an organized form of corporal punishment. There are various different types of behavior modification, Reinforcement is one, focusing on positive behaviors. Punishment is another, focusing on negative behaviors. And there are other forms of punishment, removal of toys or removal of incentives, and then there are aversive stimuli. Um, but I, I think that anyone would say that, that this, is, this is too much aversive stimuli. It's actually been declared torture by the United Nations. Uh, there's only one organization in the country that still is allowed to use this form of, of reinforcement. And, uh, and actually, the FDA is looking at banning using any sort of skin shock for reinforcement. And, and frankly, the fields just move beyond this, this sort of punishment in order to change behavior. And Dr. My understanding is that these young people in your center, many of them are nonverbal and maybe intellectually disabled, and you're actually fitting them with a backpack which contains then electrodes that attach to their arms and legs, and members of your center are walking around with remote controls that can shock them at will. Is that kind of correct in describing the way this is set up? Well, no, it's not uh, in the sense that it's not at will. Uh, there's very specific behaviors that we have to get approval for. And I want to specify that this is used on an individual basis. And there are a lot of safeguards in place to make sure that it's used correctly and that it's not used at will. It has to be used only for specifically defined behaviors. All of our clients and patients have received all the treatments that were just mentioned, okay? medications, several types of antipsychotics, mood stabilizers. They've been to every special school that specializes in behavior analysis. They've even seen uh, other, other people that potentially could help them. And, and no one can help them uh, with their problem behaviors. And our treatment is very safe and it's very effective in reducing the problem behaviors uh, and eliminating some of those iatrogenic treatments like uh, some of the medications and restraint. Well, respectfully, I know that there was a very well-publicized lawsuit back in 2012 against your center where Andre McCollins was videotaped strapped down to a board in restraints in his arms and legs and shocked many times over seven hours. I understand that your processes have changed a little bit since then, but there have been other complaints and other lawsuits from people who really felt that you're hurting these people, who many of whom are children or nonverbal, in order to control them. The thing you mentioned was from 2002, and yes, we've dramatically changed our practices since then. You know, Dr. Kelly, clearly our colleague here means well. I mean, he is committed to helping these patients that in his mind are not getting help any other way. Is there any room for that in your mind, or? Oh, absolutely, but I do think that you know, the, the idea of we've done everything we can for this population, we've really tried everything, now there's this experimental treatment that hasn't been proven, that sounds like the beginning of a horror movie. You know, well, not, to, it, not to put it well, on the the <laughs> well, Because well, there's a cu couple of things. Is I, I just I have to object to the use of torture, that language. Um, you know, it, the, the UN, the, a, a special representative did a report, and it was filled with inaccuracies. It was totally false. And we have a, a, an extensive response to that that documents all the ways in which they misrepresented our treatment and what our own clients and parents have said. You know, when people hear about this treatment, their first reaction is, no, that can never be appropriate. And what we ask people to do is meet the individual pa parents, see the individual cases, look at the drugs and the treatments that they've received, and evaluate it for yourself. And then also look at what happened afterwards. I mean, you know, I can't describe to you what happens when we use this treatment and uh, a family can do something as simple as take their child out to lunch or take them on a home visit.